Hello, I'm Mrs. Dunn. I'm an LPI art teacher and today we're going to learn about op art. Um, we're going to make a op art paper weave. Uh, but firstly, the materials you will need are some plain eight and a half by 11 paper, some scissors, just regular copy paper. You'll need some colored paper strips. Um, I cut mine about one inch by 11 inches. If you don't have colored paper on hand, you can just color in a piece of white paper with um, crayons or oil pastels or felt tip pens, markers, whatever you have at hand. Here's the materials for the project. So what is op art? Op art is short for optical illusion art. It's a type of abstract art. Do you know what abstract art is? I bet some of you do, we've talked about it before. Um, something like this is abstract art. It's not attempting to be real, it's abstract. Something like this is attempting to be real. This is a picture of perhaps a cow, so it looks quite real. Now, something fun about op art. What you see is not always what you get. This is a book I found in the library and enjoyed so much that I ended up purchasing for myself so I could show you in class. It's called The Art of Illusions by Brad Honeycutt and Terry Stickles. So let's have a look at this picture. I'm gonna come slightly closer so you can see it. This picture was made by a gentleman called Valentine Dubini. And let's look really close. What do we see here? We see a gentleman with wearing a hat. He has a nose, quite a large mustache and a long beard little ear poking out under his hat. If you turn this upside down, does anybody see the optical illusion? It's kind of hard to see with the camera. But look, let's see what's happening here. It's a chicken or a rooster eating out of a dish. So the gentleman's hat has turned into the dish. Here's the chicken's face and eye. This is the chicken's feathers at the top and the feet. Does everybody see that? It's a chicken eating out of a dish. Let's turn it the other way to see what we had before. Does everybody see the gentleman wearing the hat with the long beard? Okay, let's look at another optical illusion in the same book. Okay, this time we have two cubes. They look like Rubik's cubes. The artist for this piece is Stanford Slatisky and the question I have for you, again, it's kind of hard to pick it up with the camera. Does the diamond shape in the middle belong to the cube on the left or the cube on the right? It's an optical illusion. It's really quite difficult to tell. Okay, let's highlight two famous op art artists. The first one is Bridget Riley. She was born in 1931 and she's British. She's from England, the same as me. Um, if she was born in 1931, that means she's 89 years old. She's still alive and living in England. So she was famous in the 1960s for her op art. Um, her art was two dimensional, which means it's flat. She painted her art on paper or canvas, but the way she painted it really makes it look quite three dimensional. It almost looks like it's coming out towards you, the waves and the spots. Let's look a little bit closer at those waves and now at the dots. Here's another one. How does her art make you feel? When I look at Bridget Riley's art, it kind of makes my eyes go quite squinted. And sometimes it makes my stomach feel quite wheezy all those wiggly lines. The second famous op artist, it's hard to say, op artist, um, we're going to talk about is a French Hungarian artist and his name was Victor Varzeli. And he's known as the grandfather of op art. Um, this is one of the first images that was recognized as being op art or optical illusion art. It's called the zebras. And it's quite difficult to tell where the zebras start and where the zebras end. An interesting thing about Victor Vasily, or Vasily, was um, if anybody's ever heard of the car Renault, you might not, it's a French car. 
and Victor Vasily um, designed the logo for Renault motor cars. So every car you'll see um, at the very front of the car, on the nose of the car, almost like you would recognize the Mercedes sort of circle with the two lines in the middle, the front of the Renault motor car was invented by Victor Vasily. Okay, so let's get on with our art project today. We are going to be making a paper weave. And once you finish your artwork today, you'll have something like this. There's a blue one I made. Here is a red and white one. And finally, here is a green one. So this is what we're gonna have when we've finished our project. So weaving is a technique that's been used for probably thousands of years. Um, all our clothing is made by weaving. Uh, our clothing starts with just a thread and it's woven together to make the fabrics that we wear. So traditionally, um, weaving was done with a big wooden loom like this. And today our loom that we're going to use is going to be a paper loom. So I'm gonna show you in a moment how to make these, but just a little bit of technical information is just interesting, is when you're weaving, the threads that are going vertically up and down are called the warp and the threads or the paper like we're gonna to use today that go horizontally, that go across are called the weft. Okay, so I've enlisted my two, well, two of my children to come and help with the project. It's Maya Dunn and Danny Dunn. They are currently in, what grades are you in Danny? Fifth grade and eighth grade. So thank you for coming to help me guys. Um, so first thing you gotta do is take your piece of copy paper, nothing on it so far, it's just um, eight and a half by 11. And you're going to simply fold it in half. So line up the two corners as best you can. Then you'll do yours on the table. Fold it in half. Okay, so press down the outside edge. That's right. Then next thing you're going to do is, you don't really need a ruler, but if you've got one at hand, you're going to measure from the top one inch. And when I say the top, the way you'll know which is the top or bottom is... I call it my magic V. Put your finger and put the V in. So you're going to draw the line at the top of the V. Okay. So measure one inch from the top of the paper. I'm going to do it up here against my shirt. One inch about here. And then on the other side at the very top, you do the same. Measure one inch. Then you're going to draw a line at the very top. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is cut uh, our paper up to the line like this. We're going to make a series of five cuts. Let me show you. So first thing, again, we're going to use the magic V. So just so you know where to cut the paper to, um, make sure your V of your scissors lines up with the V. I can show you with the camera at the bottom. That's the way you know you're doing it correctly. So I'm going to come behind the camera to show you. So first one I'm going to do, and you, Maya and Danny, you can start if you understand. You're going to cut, whoo, where is it? Up to the line. One, two, three, four, five. So I've done five cuts up to the line. Next thing you're going to do is open up your piece of paper and it almost looks like one of those lanterns. So some of you have, might have done weaving before or you might have older siblings that have done a weaving class at one of your schools. Um, if that's the case, then maybe they could, um, could come and help you right now. That would be really great. So what I'm gonna recommend is you just choose one color. So go ahead and pick just one color, about eight strips of each one. Um, I'm gonna pick a nice lime green. Um, and what you do is you start with the line that you did at the top of your page. So make sure that when you do your weaving that your line is at the top. And what I like to do when I'm weaving is I always 
and go over the first sort of, I call them bars. So we're gonna go over and under, over and under, and things will make sense. It seems a little complicated at the beginning. So here goes. The first one I'm gonna go over, and then the second bar I'm gonna go under, and then I'm gonna go over and under. Pushing it all the way along. I'm gonna put it in front of me again. And under. What's really important when you're doing this is you push it all the way up to the top. See how I did that? So the second strip that you do, um, you do the opposite. So if you started, for example, over here, it's under. This one, I'm gonna go over the first strip and under the second, over the third, under the fourth, over the fifth and under the sixth one. Then again, it's really important when you're weaving to push it up, use your hands to push it up to the top. Each time, push it up. Okay, and you simply continue doing the same thing. So my third strip, the first time I went under, second time over, third time under, over. You push it through, up, under and over each time. Like I said, the really important thing is wedge it up, push it up very gently each time. So once you get the hang of going under and over, um, you just carry on going all the way down. Um, this is the one that I finished, my green and white one. Danny, do you want to show yours? Hmm. The red and white one looks really quite up art. Maya, do you want to show yours? Hmm. Very nice. You can change the distance of your cut lines to make them really narrow or really far apart. That also changes um, your design. Sometimes you can do zigzag lines. That really makes it quite interesting. And why not, once you've made the first one, challenge yourself and add some colors. This one's made by two different colors. You can add three or four, it's up to you. Um, so we hope you enjoyed the weaving project today. Um, go ahead and try it. Any questions, then please um, contact Alpine. Thank you.